So, Robert, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, I had really not much of an idea. Um, actually, uh, the nearest I could come to anything would be a uh, disc jockey on a country radio station somewhere in the South. And how did you come to become an economist? Well, it was a tortuous road. I originally studied uh, physics and engineering and um, was good enough at it to keep going, but not good enough at it to really want to keep going. And I eventually dropped out of that and shifted over to economics, and I did that for about 12 years altogether. And then I discovered the Alexander Technique. And uh, did you get a, a master's or a PhD in economics? I have a master's and a, like an almost PhD. I, didn't, I never wrote a thesis, but, uh, but yeah, gra advanced graduate work, I guess you could say. And how did you discover the Alexander Technique? Uh, it was, there was, I was living in Toronto, and there was a magazine uh, there, kind of a city magazine, came out monthly, and it had an article about the w one teacher in Canada at the time, and it was quite a good article, actually. It was about him, and it was about the technique. I'd never heard of it before, and I was very intrigued. Uh, I wasn't quite intrigued enough to call at the moment, but I put it aside, and then about, uh, well, a few months later, a colleague at work, it turned out, was taking Alexander lessons. So that that intrigued me, and I could see changes in, in her. And uh, then eventually I thought, well, I'll just go and, and check it out. And I did, and uh, got hooked pretty pretty quickly. So what was the year that you first saw the article, and how long till you took your first lesson? Uh, the article was, um, I think, in 1975. I think I, probably early 75, I took my first lesson sometime in late November, maybe 1975. And how did you come to decide to train to teach the technique? Well, uh, I, I was going for lessons uh, once a week, uh, maybe sometimes twice, and I was really noticing some pretty dramatic changes. And I also, the teacher also had these sort of group things in his studio, and they weren't exactly Alexander classes. I, I later realized they were kind of Feldenkrais things, but in any event, I met a number of his other students that way and it, and his way of teaching was he did have individual lessons but the time frame was very fluid and often there would be overlaps and you could be around for other people's lessons part of the time and i just saw the the changes and i just to me it just seemed like a lot more interesting and useful than the work I was doing. I was working for the government of Ontario, and it was it was a fun job, but um, well, it was also a job that was clearly not doing anything useful for anybody. So I thought this this sounds a lot better, and I figured it was a good way to get more Alexander work, which which I was getting a bit greedy for. Was there a aha moment when you first realized that this stuff was powerful? There was uh, a couple of aha moments. Uh, the first one was the day after my first lesson when I went out for a, a walk. It was kind of chilly weather. I had a uh, heavier, heaviest jacket on, and I would. Uh, what I noticed that periodically my hands would come out of my jacket pocket which is where I normally kept them, probably clenched pretty tightly, knowing me at that time, and they would just fall out. And I just, I put them back in, and, you know, in a few minutes they'd fall out. And I was I was very curious about that, because it had never happened before. And, I, and I, I guess I sort of thought it had something to do with the lesson, but I wasn't sure. 
And the big aha moments occurred in the next few weeks when I gained almost an inch in height. My clothes didn't fit. Um, and I noticed all sorts of pretty dramatic changes uh, in my physical being. And so I was totally convinced that the technique was something that was useful and powerful. I had almost no understanding of what it was, but uh, I knew it was a good thing. Were you ever physically gifted at anything physical? Not, no, not particularly, nor, nor particularly interested in the whole issue. Hmm. Well, what was your reputation in high school? Uh, I was a nerd before nerds were cool. <laughs> and uh, where did you train in England for three years? Uh, I I went uh, I went over in um, I guess it was seventy seven. I went over to just look at the various training courses, and there were I think there were four that four possibilities in England. And I uh, very quickly fastened on to uh, a course run by uh, Paul and Betty Collins. It was an offshoot of Walter Carrington's training course. He he was uh, he had a huge waiting list to get on his, and he had sort of encouraged Paul and Betty to start their own course. That and he endorsed it and occasionally came and visited it and so on. And the atmosphere there was was quite different from the other courses that I visited. It was much more easygoing. Uh, there were more Americans and actually as Australians on it. And uh, it, it just seemed like a much easier going um, environment than some of the others. And largely on that basis, that's where I went. What did you appreciate and not appreciate about those three years? Uh, to be honest, it was hardly anything I didn't appreciate. It was it was uh, it was the most some of the most interesting three years of my life. I loved the course. I also went and, and had lessons with everybody I could find in London. Uh, of different uh, different lineages, I used to go down to McDonald's course every semester for a day. Uh, had lessons with Walter. I had I had lessons with everybody who anyone recommended. And in fact, I actually uh, more or less did a second training course at the same time informally with a teacher who had trained with McDonald but had a an interesting variation on his style. I, I just maxed out on Alexander and loved it. Who was that teacher? Uh, her name was Elka de Vries. Uh, I have no idea what happened to her. Um, she uh, had trained with uh, McDonald, and she had a um, she she had a sort of um, a reputation of being very good amongst a small group of people. I happened to find out about her, and uh, her work was very powerful, um, very different from the training course I was on. And and about halfway through my own training course, I, I came out to Lincoln to take one of Marge Barstow's uh, workshops. And I immediately, or almost immediately, realized that uh, she was in a different league than any of the teachers in London, uh, and I knew that I would eventually study a lot more with her, which which I did. What was special about Marge? Well, the the initial the initial pull was I'd heard she worked with groups, and I was curious how she did that because it always seemed to me that. You know, a teacher only has two hands, and how are you going to work with a large group of people? And so that was the main, and plus the whole issue of group work or working with groups in London at that time was a very contentious issue. There were some very nasty meetings of STAT about that, um, and I just 